this base. This is what I do for my genetics. And I start out with my lecture where I go through and I tell them the three rules they need to know to do any Punnett square or figure out genetics. So basically I tell them that when I start off, and if you guys have any questions, just ask, unmute yourself and ask please, because I have the chat thing shut off. Um, I tell them if it's homozygous dominant, both letters are going to be capitalized. Homozygous recessive, they're both lowercase. Heterozygous, there's one big, one little. And I beat that in their head and I test them on, I test it. So they, they understand those three rules. And then I start out with small assignments. My first assignment I do with them, and this should be on the Google Drive, uh, where it gets shared out. It's a web quest. Uh oh, I forgot to do something. That's my stupidity. It's a web quest. It should, it should have shared it. I did hit share. I did. Okay, so you guys can see this assignment. This is a Word document. And here's the link to get to it, but I'll upload it as, a, as an assignment onto Canvas or if you use Google Classroom or things like that, they upload it. And this one's time stamped and it goes through and they'll watch it and it tells them where they can find the answer. This starts getting them the information they need to know about the genetics and the basics of it. And this is the first assignment I do and it's three pages and it'll take them, you know, about a period because there's three different videos they watch. You have your monohybrid punnets and then you go to your uh, sex, links, sex links traits. So, and everything is time, time stamped. And so they'll watch them all, they'll fill them in and they submit the document. This helps them when they go to the next assignment, Quick which question. is, the, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, with the timestamp, or I guess with videos in class, like how do you, are they just expected to have headphones with them? Or I guess like, how do you successfully watch well, videos in class? The thing is so I have, I have a class cart and we're now a one-to-one -one school. So all our kids should have it. But like, say, I, primarily the reason I do this, like I would show this in class and they would do their own assignment. And so this is just like, say I have a kid that decides he wants to go on vacation. Yeah. And it's like, you know, okay, you're on vacation. Well, here's your assignments. They're on Canvas. Make sure you do them when you're gone. We have to give them, if they're gone a day, they get a day. But we're getting new administration and I'm gonna try to see if we can change that to where if you have the stuff on Canvas, I can say your assignments are there. You need to get those done and get them turned in by the time you get back. But I don't know if my new administration will do that because my district's gone a day, get a day. But if you take vacation in the middle of school year, as far as I'm concerned, the work's got to get done and I don't want to have you do double work when you get back. So um, Denise, you missed the first one where it's all, all uh, shared again real quick. It's just uh, uh, an assignment that has uh, a basic about genetics and all you do is you if you do if you're here for this one go ahead and sit down here because we don't have a info you can want to sit over there so you can see and so basically this is the assignment here and it's all time stamped they'd watch it like if it was in class i would give them the assignment and they would they would be watching the video and they know oh when it's 139 there's my answer what is heredity and they they'd write it on their paper but i'm i have uh laptop so I'd have them type it and then we print it out and turn it in because some of the kids writing I can't read so that's the first one I have them do after I go over the basics and explaining to them about homo dominant homo recessive and heterozygous and then I go to my next assignment which is one that's really good because it's it's a punnett square and it's an auto corrector uh oh where'd it go I'll go to this one. Can you guys see this on the screen where it's, it shows genetic Punnett squares? Uh, no, it, not yet. I think you have to select like which screen if you're sharing like a particular window or tab or something. Yeah, it's not, for some reason I'm, I'm having troubles this morning. No worries. Let's see, share screen, here we go. So now you should be able to see it, correct? You see one that says genetic punnets and it has green? Yep. Yes. Okay. 
So this is one that basically, when you go through, it tells you you have to do this. Let me get you guys out of the way here so I can see my screen. It says before you do this, because they'll have to download this document. So they'll have to go to data, but I don't have to do that. I'm on, you go to data, and then it tells you you go to enable, enable uh, your autocomplete. And so you do that, and then you just take in this box here. You're supposed to be able to delete it. It doesn't delete, so I just super shrink it, grab it, put it off to the side out of the way. So it goes through, and this is Mendelian traits. And so basically it says A is heterozygous, uh, yellow seed, and YY is a cross. So you put they, they have them here. And so what it does is it makes it to where you go through and the kids fill these out. And if they don't fill them out correctly, when they're done, they will not get the magic of, why didn't it go green? It should go green like it did over here. So, and then when they fill out your genotypic, so both big Y's, it's zero. Oh, that's why I did it. That's my stupidity. Yeah, and now, so if I'm looking for a big Y and a little Y, because I'm looking for genotypic, so I have one big Y, then one big Y, one little Y. So I put in 25%. And then they hear, well, let's see, I have one, two, three. So that's 75%. And then yellow seeds, what's the phenotypic probability? What do you guys say? Well, what would I put here? What's the probability? Zero, 25, 50, 75, or 100? 25. And then this one here would be 75. So if you did it correctly, for some reason it didn't go green because that is right. So let me see if it's going to. Yeah. Well, see, this doesn't make any sense because it was, it didn't go green. So this is 50 50. See, look, I make mistakes. So there you go. So since I did a dum dum, thanks for making me look, look smart. It auto corrects. So if it does not go green like this, that means it's wrong. And so the kids will learn to do it. And if it doesn't come up, I thought when you did the punnets on my other one, when I did it, when I was doing it before, as soon as you got the boxes right, right there, it made it green, but they've been making changes to it. So I guess they change it to where you got to get all the way through. So I thought I did this, this box was wrong and that's why it didn't go green. So it goes through and it goes all the way through and it gives you all these different uh, scenarios and they go through and they're able to fill them out. And so it gives them immediate feedback. And so when the kids submit the assignment, they should all be green, it's quick, great, easy, and you're done. And it helps them with, this, with the simple Punnett square. Then I go to the next one, which is a dye hybrid, which is not fillable. Um, And this one here, I have it to where it's a PDF fillable to where when the kids go through and fill these out, these boxes, they can they can type in them and then they just fill out the stuff here. And so this is your dye hybrid cross and it has everything and you drop and drag and, and you do all of that. And this is the one to help them go through your genetics and it's more in depth where you're looking at two your dye hybrid crosses and they can submit this. I put this on canvas. They're able to go through type in the boxes because I have these because this one here is not my fillable. This was an example that I was using so I could show the people how to use my PDF fillable uh, file. And so they fill this all out and then they submit it and I grade it. And then this, what is the probability? It gives you all the questions they have to answer and they just type in underneath of it. So this is another one I do. And this is my third assignment I give them after I've lectured. And it's 
you know, some people want to want to change it to like I have stuff where I do my my crosses with uh, horn, no horn, uh, black or red. So it's more related to egg rather than just using the Mendelian stuff. But this is one that I had made, I found and I liked it. And but I have mine, my own that I use. I just use this one because it's a lot cleaner than mine. So I thought I'd show this one to you. And then the last one is the one you guys have to pay for. And it's called. I have to get it open in my Google. Let's see. Sorry about this. I have it open. I just got to find it. There it is right there. Why is it not going back to my screen? Can you maximize it? It's not going back to my screen. It should be able to auto tab to it. Okay, there we go. Now I need to get to the other one. Oh, I have to open it. I have to, I have to Google. All right, there. That's not the one I want, though. You just have that tab open. There we go. So this is the one you have to pay for. You guys can see it says Dragon Genetics Project. Can you guys see that? Okay, so this is one that I got from our science teacher who found it um, on this uh, website where you can pay you people have put it up there and you can pay anywhere from a dollar, some of them are as $20. But this one here, I wish I knew how to make it cows or pigs or something like this, but the kids really like it. And we're going through my progression for genetics. My, my average grade before I did these, the five step was about, you know, 75%, which is average. Since I've gone to the five step, I'm closer to 90 to 92% because they understand and grasp it uh, better. And then they also like doing this breeding. This is a two person project. And so I have one that's a single, but it's one I modified, but I can't give this to you guys because I paid for it and it says not to share it. And I would want to create something that I was selling to make money and have everybody give it away. So as you go through it, you have your females and you can see their genetic makeup. So this is Diva. It's, it, may, it may be hard for you guys to see because it is for me because I'm blind and old, but it gives you all these different scenarios. And so when you go to the next slide, to the next slide then you see zeke these are the males so they give you all the makeup and so then you're going to pick one of each of these and you go to the next slide to where it shows you the cross this is the first experiment and then you go to the next one and this is where you have to take and fill it in so you look at the female and you go back up here and say i should they pick nina so in the first box you click here, you put little g, you click here and put little g. And then you go back and look at Zeke. He's got big G, big G. So with us being teachers, we already know it's going to be heterozygous. Oh, I didn't get a cap, sorry. This is not working this morning. What in the world's going on? So let me shrink this down, go to undo, undo. And this is the problem. If you don't backspace, what it does, it erases it to where they can't type into it. So you just undo it. So then you'd fill in your boxes and this is the digital wheel. And so if you click on it, sometimes it'll work on Chromebooks, sometimes it won't. So if it doesn't and it doesn't work for your kids, I'll put up on the board for body color. 
I'll spin it for them and say, and I'll highlight the box they're supposed to put in. So you go through and fill out this entire assignment. A half hour is not long enough. This was supposed to be an hour long one because this assignment will take an entire period because you have one kid breeding, you have another kid breeding, and at the end they mix them and they, they breed them and you have an offspring. So you get all that done and you click on this thing here. It gives you the link, you click on it. And so you just spin it. And then what it does, it tells you which one you highlight. You go to top right, so you go back to this. Uh -oh. You go back to this one and you would highlight this box. Top, gee, many Christmas, I'm filling the boxes and so I can. So then you take it like that there and you just take and go And so now it's highlighted so they know that's the box. And then this one here ends up being a male offspring because that one's highlighted automatically. And then the second one, you just let which one wants to be male. So the mother's name you'd put up here and the, the father's name you'd put there. You go through, fill this all out. Hopefully they don't do like I did the first time in the one example where I didn't do it right so they don't have a mistake. And then you go to the next page. And as the next page, these are all the different parts of the dragon that you're gonna build. Once you've done your cross and you figured out what they are, you go down here and it'll keep going. And you actually put your dragon together. And this is why it takes a long time because you gotta go back up to the very first document where it tells you if it's large G, you get a green body, limbs and tail. Now, if it's recessive, it would be gray body, limbs and tail. So then you'd go here and you'd click on this part here. So we'd pull all these ones down or you'd pull all these ones down. And then you go to the next trait that you would have filled in, which would be the neck length. So you go up here, so neck length. If it's long neck, if it's large N, then you'd grab the long neck from this picture here, right here, and you put that in this one right here and you'd, you'd write it there. And so that's what you do. You build the dragons. The kids build their dragons and they get to see what they have. And then you put the name of your dragon here because this is the one you bred and say we want to name it Fufu. So you type in Fufu. Fufu the dragon. Fufu the dragon. Now you're going to do your genotype for color. And it's just like the last assignment where basically they should have learned the difference between genotype and phenotype. Genotype is what's in the genes. Phenotype is what you can actually see. So that's what you're, uh oh, is this is exactly like the computerized version of, I don't, I don't know what Rebops is, sorry. Oh yeah, it's similar, yeah. Okay, so I, I don't know what that one is, but thanks for letting me know because I had no clue. Um, and so they put their dragon in there and then they start looking at this part here. Okay, so we know it's heterozygous, so we know it's going to be basically genotypically. The genotype is what? Because at the bottom, let's see here. Let me get down here to the bottom where they gave where they gave an example. I'm trying to get there. So here's the example they give, so the kids can see it. And then it goes through and it shows you big G, little G, and it tells you the phenotype is gonna be green and it's 100%. So they give you an example of how to do it, but when you guys, when, they, when the kids go to do this, this is where they're gonna take and come down here. And when the kid bred their first one, so say these two are partners and they've done their first dragon. They're gonna take their first dragon information and give it to the other person. One's gonna be the male and one's gonna be the female. They're gonna go through and they're gonna start filling this, these boxes out so they can build their dragon. And basically then they go down here, they put their dragon together, then they do their genotypic and phenotypic ratios and they show the phenotype probability. And so they, they would name their dragon together and then they'd submit the assignment. It's really basic and easy, but I've had like, don't take this wrong, but my SPED kids, sometimes it takes them two or three days. And I will 
help them through it as much as I can because I don't have a, a pair in every class. And sometimes I have 13 or 14 kids in class that are on IEPs. So this could drag out to two days. Unfortunately, sometimes it will go to three, but I try to take my other kids that are, that are ahead and I try to push them. And then I'll just take and work with those kids individually. So it's, it's, it's fun. The kids like building it. You know, they bring them in here, they put them together. And like I said, it, it's raised my, my percentage for this unit, you know, 15 plus percent. And it, it really, it really seems to have been something that has been worthwhile. So do any of you guys have any questions on this? Um, on the Google Drive, when they release it, I have the website where you can go and download it. All the documents that I, that I showed you guys today that I went through, they'll be there. This one, you can go and buy it. And I, I've given you the direct link so you guys can get that. So does anybody have any questions or something you want me to show you on this? Because I went through it pretty quick because we really only have four minutes left. Can you just briefly sum up your five steps? That you, you mentioned there was five steps. So I guess what are those five exact steps? Okay, so the first step is, is I start when I start my units on genetics and Punnett squares. I tell them the three rules. And if you, if you can make them remember that if it's homozygous dominant, the letters are always capitalized. Homo recessive, they're always lowercase. And if they're heterozygous, they're always they're always one big, one little. Is that one step? What's that? Is that your first step? That's my first step. And I beat it into their heads and I test them on it. I'll do an entry task. Hey, what are the three rules? Give me an example. And I'll do it for five days. So I'll put up a scenario on the board. They have to put it in their comp notebook and I'll call on somebody and we'll talk about it as a class. And so if somebody gets it wrong, then I give them a lifeline. And then once they get it, then I make the person that missed it. So what did they, what did they explain to you? Can you tell me what they told, what they told us? And so they can self-correct themselves and it helps re, uh, reestablish and, and reaffirm the rules that they understand that. And then after that, I go to the one where they watch the video and it's all time stamped and they fill out that worksheet. I can go back and show you that one again. Hopefully it works. That was the WebQuest one? That's the WebQuest. Oh, I went too far. That's this WebQuest one. And I put online this, this sheet you'll have, and I gave you guys the answer key as well. So I go to the WebQuest, and then I go to the one that basically, that's my second step. Then I go to the one that is the auto grader. So they get immediate feedback. And I tell them, if it doesn't go green, that means you're wrong. Don't turn it in unless I have green. And so that's, that's my third step. Then my fourth step, technically, is my die hybrid, my die hybrid cross, mm -hmm. which is this worksheet here where they have to go through and they fill it out. And this is also on there with the answer key. And then my last step is they get to breed dragons. Oh my goodness. And if you guys buy it and you send me the thing that you bought it, I'll send you the one for the individual where they can do their own. They can breed their first dragon. They can cross it and do it on their own. But I try to make kids like the kids that are, have social emotional issues that they really can't talk to kids. And I've had some of those kids like I'll talk to them and they'll sit there and look at me with a blank stare and they literally will not. I can sit there. I'll sit right next to them and try. They will not say a word. I have kids like that. So I have them do do it by themselves because they will not. They will sit in class and do nothing if I try to make them work with somebody else. They're not going to do well in the real world if they have to work in a group setting. But if they can demonstrate they understand it, then all the more power to them. And I just made it so an individual could do it on their own. And I can give you that one if you if you buy it and I'll, I'll give you that individual assignment. So you don't have to go through and do it on your own. Because it's one that I took and modified this one and, and made it into just one person project instead of two. So that's my five steps. Do you guys have any other questions? That was cool. Thank you, Mom. Oh, that's super. Oh, All right. So much.
Thank you. You guys have a good day. You too. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day.